Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. My name is Danny DeLillo, we're here at the South Park Center and I'm delighted to welcome back one of our very special alumni, Jesse, it's great to have you here with your fantastic movie, Shadow Cell. For those that haven't seen it, let's take a little clip. I told you not to blow through your savings until your unemployment benefits were officially approved. No, you didn't. You don't ever give advice. All you do is criticize. Constructive criticism is advice. What am I gonna do? It's been three months and my landlord is up my ass about rent. Get a job. I've applied everywhere. Along with millions of other people, there aren't that many jobs available during a pandemic. Guess it's time to lace up your hooker boots and find a street corner. Nobody walks street corners anymore, dummy. Everything's online now. Like, like OnlyFans. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesse, welcome back. I'm honestly, it's so lovely to see you come back with more films for us and we love having you part of our family. So it's really good to have you here again. So thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. So excited to be back. Um, Shadow Self, like what a, what a great, what a great film. Like, honestly, thank you. Like, I've got so many questions. Um, for those that haven't seen it, tell us a little brief synopsis. Um, well, it's about a self-destructive party girl who finds herself trapped alone during the pandemic and finally has to face her greatest obstacle or greatest demon, which is herself, or the shadow self, which is an accumulation of her unexamined collective unconscious. And uh, as the pandemic rages on, she has to learn to become one with herself and right the wrongs of her past, or she will succumb to insanity. I mean, it sounds like a lot of us really, isn't it, during the pandemic? <laughs> Yeah. I really admired that. I thought that was so clever. I think we all, all of us in different ways, found challenges ourselves, which even kind of like bring out ourselves that we didn't want to bring out. Yeah, right? absolutely. And I love that you articulate in this way. It was so powerful to watch, particularly on the big screen. Um, dare I say, where did, the, where did the inspiration <laughs> come from in deciding to turn this idea on? Um, I've always wanted to do something where one actor plays two characters since I was little. Uh, my, one of my favorite movies growing up that helped me get rid of my southern accent is this movie called Big Business with uh, Bette Midler and Lily Tomlin where they play twins that get mixed up at birth. Yeah. And I've just always great been, film. yeah, great yeah. film. And I, uh, I've just always been fascinated with the concept of like the duality on our personalities and big black swan fan as well, uh, and fan of stuff like that. And um, I wasn't really sure I could pull something like this off until I saw that show on HBO called I Know This Much Is True with uh, Mark Ruffalo. And um, I was re-watching, I think, the pilot or something, and I was really absorbed in a really deep scene. And I was like, wait a second, there's no wide shot. And I rewound it and I looked at it and there was not a wide shot in the entire thing. It was just like cutting to Mark Ruffalo as the two brothers yeah. back and forth. And then I did some research on it and I heard that the creators and Mark Ruffalo like had it in their contracts or, or at least part of the deal that like they wanted to do as min as few wide shots of them together as possible because it was distracting and the story was too serious and that got my brain kind of thinking well maybe i could pull something like this off that i wouldn't need a lot of technology because that was kind of my big concern um and then uh the pandemic happened um and the safety plan, my last uh, thing in NFMLA screened here. And it was really exciting, but um, it just could not have debuted at a worse time because everything was online in the world. There was so much going on in the world and nobody cared. And rightfully so, there was much more important things happening. Um, and afterwards, I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do next. And I was brainstorming about it. But uh, the thing in the safety plan that people responded to the most was definitely Alyssa's performance in the third chapter, which screened at NFMLA. And um, I started thinking, well, maybe we could develop something together because I think I spend a lot of time on my own ideas and like uh, wanting something to be a proof of concept or a pitch for something. And I, uh, Larry LeBeau, who is the executive director of NFMLA, uh, gave me some good career advice at the festival last time. I was like, you should just make something that's a standalone thing. It's not a pitch for anything. It's just a standalone film. So I approached Alyssa with that and uh, we actually made a list of, neither of us had any idea what we wanted to do, uh, but I, we each made a list of 10 financially successful films that we both liked that at least turned in three or four times of their box office receipts. And a lot of ours were really similar, but again, the one that popped up the most highest on the list was Black Swan. So um, I think we were on the same page immediately of like what we wanted to do. And I pitched this idea to her of like, what if you play two characters? And she obviously loved it. And also we were thinking of something of 
what would be convenient to shoot during COVID yeah. that wouldn't require a huge crew or all these people. And it was just her and her apartment basically. And, um, we it just snowballed from there. That's, that's, that's great. And I think, I honestly think it was, I mean, we haven't, believe it or not, we've not seen a film like this, particularly during the pandemic. And wow. So, you know, the films that, the, the, the thoughts and things that came through our minds, you know, during the, during those time periods, like it, what may look like, oh, wow, that's crazy. I yeah. Think, no, go back on yourself a little bit. Remember what you were like when you were just trying to, when you were just kind of struggling with like what you are, who you are, and being kind of tr in that trapped feeling. Yeah. Um, how do you, like, I mean, firstly, you obviously work with Alyssa, who's fantastic. And yes. She's great, and the, the last thing you brought to us. But, like, how do you direct two characters and one person? Like, I'm always curious how that works. Like, I think we were so on the same page. I mean, I can't take credit for any of her performance. That's all her. And the entire film hinges on, like, is the performance good or not? It wouldn't matter if the cinematography or any of those things. She is the movie. She's the entire thing. Um, I kind of felt like we spent so much time in the writing process, and it was such a collaborative process, that I think we were just really on the same page of, like, who this character is. And really, the shadow self part of her is the same part of the character. It's yeah. just the part that she doesn't want the world to see. Yeah. So I, in terms of that, it wasn't really a challenge in terms of directing her. If I was like, hey, I need your hand to go higher. Hey, I need you to hit this word a little harder. She just like, got it done. Um, directing her was definitely the least, I hope this sounds like a compliment, the least challenging part of it yeah. because she was just so in control over it and like knew exactly what she was doing. There was never any, we were always on the same page of like, who is this character, her background, what we want her to be, her trajectory, her narrative arc. Um, I have to say that was the easiest part. And it was re a really hard shoot, actually. So tell, tell us a little bit about that, because you shared a little bit about that. What was the, some of the challenges that you had? I have to say everything I've ever made working independently at this level um, just continues to get harder and harder and harder. And every time I think, oh, it can't be worse than the last project. The safety plan was at the time the hardest thing I'd ever done because we shot it in pieces because we didn't have the money to shoot it all at once. Um, and just like keeping this group of people together over the course of a year that we shot it. Um, and then it took forever for post-production to get finished and then all that kind of thing. And I thought, oh, well, this is just in one location. It's one actor, except for uh, Zari Rose, who plays the ex-girlfriend, makes an appearance at the end. Um, how bad can it be? We shooting anything low budget is hard enough, but COVID protocols and like we couldn't afford a COVID compliance officer. So I was the COVID compliance officer. In addition to everything else I had to do, we lost one of our crew members. Uh, he got infected with COVID. He didn't die. He was infected with COVID the day before the shoot. And we just, he was supposed to kind of be the assistant to the cinematographer. So I ended up having to take on his job as well. Um, I think we were probably about a crew of nine people or 11 to nine people in that apartment. And by the time the equipment in there was in there and all that kind of thing, we didn't even have space for a DIT station. So we would have, when we weren't shooting in the bedroom, we'd like dump all the footage in there. And then when we'd have to go around to shooting in the bedroom, uh, we'd have to move our DIT station over to a new place. And like, there was just no room once the equipment was in. Um, and also we had, we kind of realized like days before the shoot, we were going to have to shoot this block style. Our cinematographer, our wonderful cinematographer, Diego Madrigal, um, was like, I don't know how she's going to get changed as both characters in every scene that's going to delay us. So I never shot anything block style before. I was very nervous about it. Um, the first day alone, we were so behind schedule that Alyssa and I were both like, I don't know how we're going to finish this. We're like so six scenes behind yeah and I mean I had shot other stuff during the pandemic too but I I just never shot anything block style and kind of felt out of my element but the technical challenges and also there was a bit of confusion on everybody's part about like when the shadow appears is it going to be like an effect is she coming up with smoke and was she coming out of this scene in the end where she's laying on the bed supposed to be facing herself <laughs> we were running out of time we were so behind schedule as usual and um Alyssa's supposed to turn over and face the shadow 
and she wasn't sure where she was supposed to look. And then she looks over here, and then Jade goes like, I think she's over here. And I was like, no, she's down over here. And then the take, you can hear us all like trying to figure out where the shadow is supposed to be. And poor Alyssa is just like tr giving it her all and crying, and tears are running down her face and trying to get, keep up that momentum, which we obviously did. But you always get there in the end, though, Jesse. I mean, you know, you pulled it off, and look, you made a fantastic film. As Thank well. you. You know, what I love about you know, you always just have such a really good production design. It's always like really well lit. I'm always like curious, like, do you have your own influences or is that how important that is to you as well? Because I always think your style is like so on point. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, I don't know how, but I've always been really blessed to work with incredible cinematographers at an incredibly low budget film. Uh, I can't believe we even found Diego to begin with. He also did the safety plan. I, um, I am a vi very visual person and I like to build you know lookbooks and that kind of thing and have something to show the cinematographer of like this is what I want it to look like and he takes it to the next level and uh, at one point I wanted to make everything in this pink and Diego was like we're not making everything pink it ha there ha that's going to look terrible it has to have some you know diversity some visual diversity um I think the look with shadow self was first of all all the walls in that apartment were white so I thought, well, I can't shoot a monochrome film. We have to figure out something. Um, and we had done the neon thing in Alyssa's episode in the safety plan. So we thought, well, why don't we up that? Because also it could be like, she's an alcoholic, her character's an alcoholic. It's, she's delusional. She's imagining this version of herself. Let's make it look like a bar. But, and we put up like bar signs and that kind of stuff because that would just be such an unnatural way to live and it would like send her into some sort of insanity, especially if she has cabin fever and she's trapped at home. Um, but yeah, I've always been very blessed to work with incredible cinematographers. So Diego and Madrigal, you're the best. No, it just it always just looks great. It's so great with the big screen as well, honestly. Um, of all the projects that you've made, you know, you learn from each project, different new things. What have you learned from this? Hmm. I have learned that the closer you get to making something honest, the more, the more it either ignites people and makes them really excited to the point where it kind of causes problems uh, because they want to be a part of it so bad or it just scares people. And, um, I, you know, the film's doing well and that kind of thing, but I think so many people were just like, when I, we pitched it, it was too dark, it was too this or that. I, but I think the closer you get to making something really honest and the closer you get to the truth, the more in the center of the storm you're going to be. And you have to learn to live with that uncertainty and find a healthy way to deal with it that doesn't drive you insane. I mean, every single day of production was honestly just got worse and worse. To the, but every day I would walk away and I'd know we shot something. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you exactly what we shot, but I was like, I know we have something. I know that like we captured it or I wouldn't have moved on. And um, I was so surprised when we assembled it, that all these things that I worried myself to death over when we were shooting it and worried myself to death before I saw the footage, nobody noticed. Isn't it funny? Isn't it, you're like, oh my God, really? Like, you know, yeah. I mean, I drove myself to several insomnia induced meltdowns <laughs> over this film we had rolling band issues i've never dealt with that before uh, new challenges with every film come up i've never heard the term rolling bands before i don't ever want to hear them again i interviewed 20 people to fix it and 19 of them were like no hard no you'll never fix it and it was like an 80 percent of the film because of the neon and we found one person to fix it and he fixed all of it i couldn't believe it but yeah. Just, just keep on going. Keep on. Yeah. You know, what, you know when you obviously make this, making this film, and you have an idea of, of obviously what you want to make and how you want to portray it, why you want to make it. Like, what did you? Is it been? A, what has your audience reaction been like? Or what did you want your audience to even get from your film? Like, you know, what did you want to experience? Or what has the reaction been? Well, um, similar to what Alyssa said during the screening yesterday, of I, I hope the film inspires people to learn to live with all of yourself. Yeah. You know, like. I, we hear the ego, the ego, and it can't, the ego can be a destructive, horrible thing, but then there's, in a way, it's also a defense mechanism, and you have to learn to, like, you know, going back to Black Swan, you have to learn to live with the white swan and the black swan. Those yeah. parts of you are in everybody, yeah. and you shouldn't run from it, you shouldn't be afraid of it, even though facing it can be really brutal sometimes. Uh, 
you just have to do it and you have to the I can't remember, I think it's from the end of Sex in the City where she says the greatest relationship you'll ever have is with yourself and that's yeah. so true and you have to I think I look back at my early years and I think the thing I struggled with was learning to like myself nobody ever taught me that nobody ever told me that that's something you had to like figure out on your own or like take the initiative to do on your own so I hope that's what people take from it learning to live with all the parts of yourself I don't think it's a rarity too I think it's a rarity to you know to say hey look at the parts that I don't really want to show to the world the right parts that I wish I was better at or the parts I'm trying to revolve and I think you just you know articulated that really really well well thank you help each other a bit more selfful about themselves so yes good. Um, I'm already excited. What is next? What is next, Jesse? What are you next for us? Tell us, tell us. <laughs> um, I just wrapped post production. I actually was looking at footage uh, before I came over. Um, I just wrapped post production on a short film about the homeless epidemic that I would like to adapt into a television series. Oh, wow. Yes, so I'm very excited about that. Is this set in Los Angeles? Or? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Oh, yes, where we have one of, if not the worst, homeless epidemic yeah. in probably all of America. Yeah. Uh, so I'm working on that. I was very privileged to be one of the chosen alumni with this new program in a, at a Los Angeles City College where they're trying to do like a mini version of the AFI program where they fund people's work. Um, it was the first thing I've ever made where they had an actual like full crew and like a costume department, and a props department. Every painting you see in Shadow Self, Alyssa and I hung those up ourselves. <laughs> Every like string light on it, like, and she's much better at those things than I am. So I was like standing beside her handing her nails and stuff this is the first thing i've made that like i have i have a line producer i had an executive producer so it's definitely a big step up in my career because we i like even the costumes in shadow self Alyssa and i came up with those we ordered them from amazon we ordered like at least four different dresses from china that never came that we had to fight to get refunds for um so i i'm very excited about this project and to turn it into a television series um i'm also looking to get funding for my first feature um, I'd really like to get into television, but I've heard the way to get there is making a feature first. Yeah, that's actually a really good way to do it, to be honest with you. So, yeah. yeah. Well done. So, I'm working on that. And then I have uh, another one of my shorts that's streaming on Reverie TV um, that I'd like to adapt into a comedic series about my experience in a green card marriage that was destroyed by Homeland Security. So, um, that's what I've got coming up. So, this, this is uh, so great. And, and I'm so thankful you making all of these projects and thank you you know particularly you know we live in this city the homeless problem i'm so glad that um you're addressing that because there's some people that are hurting out there you know that are on our streets surrounded by us and yeah i'm glad you're drawing attention to that because we can never do it enough to you know raise that platform as well so yeah thank you so much i am thank so, you always so impressed with all the work you do we're so proud of you new filmmakers Elliot. Thank, thank you, you so much yourself. thanks for all your passing through jesse thank you thanks for having me Thank you.